It's the first day of school for thousands of New Jersey students. And in Creskill, Bergen County, middle and high schoolers are being welcomed back to their building for the first time in more than two years. The shutdowns began at the start of the pandemic and extended after Creskill schools were heavily damaged by Tropical Storm Ida, which brought heavy winds and flooding rains last August. Well, several feet of water filled the auditorium and gymnasium, the media center and classrooms destroying all of it. The extensive work took longer than parents and educators had hoped. Now they're hoping both the storm and pandemic are behind them. Senior correspondent Joanna Gagas was there for the first day of school. I'm really happy to be back. It's wonderful. It really is wonderful. I'm so happy for all the kids. The gray skies couldn't dim the happiness at Cresco Middle and High School as students finally returned to full-time school today for the first time since the start of the pandemic. Last year they were, you know, remote um, and now being back in school and having social skills being built up, um, they're happy to be here. The rain, a somewhat fitting reminder of the floodwaters that destroyed the school this time last year during Tropical Storm Ida, just as most other schools in the state were finally getting back to in-person learning after COVID. It's been very, very hard on the kids. This is my first year in high school, like in the building, so it's, it's really exciting, but I mean, last year was kind of a struggle for me, being completely online with the school being shut down and all that, you know. As a junior right now, do you have the sense that you've kind of been robbed of your high school experience in a way? Oh yeah, completely. I mean, it just sucks that, I mean, I see all my friends from different towns being able to go to high school and enjoying that high school experience. And this is the first time that I've been in high school and having that experience, so it's tough. It feels really weird. Like, I don't even know where my classes are because the last time I was here was sophomore year and we barely went in. Like, it was half in and half out. So I never had a normal year of high school. For Kletzman and her friends, making the most of this one year of high school is now their priority. We're trying to schedule as many activities as possible, like car decorating and like everything and trying to be as involved as possible because we didn't have that in the past years. So we're really excited. The teaching staff is feeling a lot of the same emotions their students are. It's a little bit of nervous not knowing what to expect, but once you see all the kids faces and them coming back into the building, feels like you never left. Now more than ever, I'm focused on building relationships, memorizing names as soon as possible so that they know Miss DeMarco sees me as me. I'm I'm here, I'm her student, and I'm not, you know, a face in a black box on a screen. And addressing his students' emotional needs is step one for Superintendent Mike Burke. You're always concerned about their mental health specifically because they're not interacting with their peers, and I think that's the biggest concern we have. Our kids did real well test-wise. They got into great schools. Um, so even if there is a deficit, they were able to make it up. And I think our teaching staff, which is outstanding, will make up that deficit quickly because you're in person now, finally. But it's been a long year for Burke, who had the task of completely renovating this building in just a year after every section but one was destroyed by floodwaters. The floors are different. The walls are different. The univents and uh, energy recovery units are different and there's not as much technology right now in the rooms. The wireless is working, the air conditioning is working, but we're still getting things shipped in. Construction came down to the wire and the certificate of occupancy was secured just days before students returned. But a major part of the renovation is planning for future storms, especially because light flooding around the building is common. We do have muscle wall, which we set up for the one area that we thought could flood this morning and it didn't, which is great. Uh, we are having a four foot high levee on the left side of the building and a two foot high uh, cinder block wall on the right side of the building. That won't come until next year. But for right now, we have a plan, but we still have a lot of work to do to make sure that we're secure all the way around on, on the outer areas of the town. And it took the whole town to make these recovery efforts possible. So a $21 million referendum was passed by the community basically eight to one in January. But this referendum was different than others because we don't get the lump sum right away. We get it as it's needed. So we have started to get some money back from FEMA. It takes a while to get it back, but you have to produce that you've you know spent the money and what it's being used for. Uh, we've probably used about 17, 18 million of the 21, and the last couple millions are left for the media center and the auditorium. This is the auditorium that saw the worst of the flooding last year. This and the media center are the only spaces that still require construction. It should be completed by mid to late winter, and Superintendent Burke is confident all will be completed under budget. In Creskill, I'm Joanna Gagas, NJ Spotlight News.